like uh, to ask people to be short and concise and also to uh, introduce yourselves because this is the the first sort of the beginning of the meeting mm -hmm. so we do not necessarily know each, or, each other all of us so so uh, <coughs> the floor is open yes mr cato please thank you greta and thank you for the panelists and uh, the invitation of uh, icd i'm xavier jean keita i'm from uh, icc and uh, i'm the head of uh, the defense office uh, i would like to make some uh, quick uh, observation after mrs pordis ingatodir uh, um, presentation um, i agree with you madame that uh, icc um, can be sometimes conservative, but uh, I think that uh, your presentation was not very fair with ICC, and uh, I will just uh, remind, as Mr. Valio did, that uh, having an international tribunal with a victim having, for the first time, at the international level, a flaw that is not conservative at all and it's coming from a defense lawyer saying that the place of victim uh, is very important in ICC and this is not conservative and ICC do uh, have a, a, a trust fund for victims repairing some uh, trouble in the fields without waiting for a conviction so this is important to underline and ICC, the first permanent court, the other you have quoted are just ad hoc. And uh, in, uh, in law, the main principle is um, nulla pene, nullum crimen sine lege. In French, pas de peine, pas de crime sans loi. Meaning that uh, uh, establishing the rule and the law this is really law because you know the law and you know if you have to break or not the law. But the ad hoc tribunal may have been seen in the past as a justice for a, a, a victorious person. So I think that having a, f a first permanent court, we cannot say that that court is conservative. Another point I would underline is complementarity. Complementarity means that states first have the responsibility to investigate and to organize trial and not the ICC. We do not have a police, we do not have an army, and uh, we have to rely on cooperation and uh, this is why IC ICD's initiative are very uh, uh, Im important. And finally, you were uh, quoting uh, Africa has targeted by ICC, saying, well, nothing new, or uh, some head of state. I will just uh, precise that uh, ICC, uh, uh, when uh, I ICC started, uh, African Union were very quiet till 2009 in March, when the first arrest warrant against a head of state uh, Omar el-Bashir was uh, decided by the pretrial chamber. And suddenly, African Union discovered that ICC was existing. As an African, I'm very proud to be an ICC manager. And among the 124 states, 34 are African, and I'm proud of that. But we cannot say that uh, ICC is targeting Africa. Main majority of the cases and situation have been sent to ICC by African uh, head of state. And uh, um, uh, I, I, I will finish, Madam. Uh, only Kenya was an initiative of ICC. And concerning the sovereignty and your topic, uh, two situations, Libya and uh, Darfur Sudan, have been referred uh, by the Security Council to ICC. And in the Rome Statute, uh, the provision said that uh, when cases are sent to ICC by the UN Security Council, a part of costs have to be paid by the UN. This has never been done. So this, 
This is to put on the credit of ICC, and this is not conservative. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will give you a, an opportunity to answer, but is there any m more comments? I do not see any, so I'm going to give uh, <coughs> Thortis the floor to, to react. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Please. Thank you. I agree to everything you say. And I have to uh, reveal, I was the chair of the victims group of the, NGI, the ICC coalition for years in New York on victims issue and reparation. I've written extensively on Article 75 and 79. So that is truly a new at the court. My point, and I was speaking very fast, I know, was that there's nothing new with respect to sovereignty and international law. There's nothing progressive with respect to ICC and international law, the substantive law, with respect to sovereignty or even reparation. There's an old, a very confirmed obligation of states to make reparation. And, and, and just to underline the importance, yes, of victims' participation at the ICC, and, <coughs> but that's also, it, it's risky with the Kenya trial failing now this month. I mean, in a uh, Ruto case that was, you know, thrown out, you had, what, 800 victims have already signed up to participate in that single trial. See, so, I mean... That's the responsibility of the prosecutor who failed. You yeah. cannot blame state for that. No, no, but I'm saying that my point is that with respect to the law, there's nothing... It's nothing progressive. They were very careful when they did the Rome Statue. That's my point. Thank you so much. Um, I think we will just uh, close the panel now. And, and uh, <coughs> uh, okay, so one more uh, comment, but please, uh, in, in interest of time, because we have run, you know, so uh, two minutes, please. I, I'm going to say something as, as an African, not as a judge or anything, but as an African who lives at such a time that is troubling, um, I have observed a trend, and I'm not the only one, recently, where the African heads of state individually are changing their constitutions to remove term limits, and they're more and more becoming very defensive of their sovereignty and their powers, and at the same time are becoming more authoritarian within their borders and, and more abusive of the human rights of their citizens. And this is at the same time they're accusing the ICC of, 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 of being um, anti-African and threatening to pull out. All this looks like a cloud or a storm is brewing. Uh, a very ominous uh, storm is brewing for Africa. And I'm thinking, what can we do in this forum or in other fora to, 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 to identify the early warning um, signs and, and criteria of, of catastrophes about to happen on the African continent, as I believe they really are, um, in, in such a way that we, we, we can intervene uh, in the affairs of the African people in order to ensure that the, the atrocities uh, that are likely to happen are prevented and that th there is more democracy and that the, the democracy that we have built in the last two, three decades is not worn away by this coming up trend. That, that you, you, maybe any of you can, can answer or maybe in future panels, the, the upcoming panels, but I think this is a, a realistic question that we're looking at on the ground and it's a very worrying trend. Um, we've just had elections in Uganda and it, it is very unsettling what is going on there. And, and we're sort of looking within ourselves. We don't seem to have a solution. We're looking at the international community. They're not interested. And the situation is deteriorating. And we were one of the more stable amongst many unstable countries in the sub-region. So what is going to happen when things fall apart at the center? Uh, thank you so much. I, th I think this is a very... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an issue that should be discussed, uh, but I think I have to close the panel, but, uh, but I hope uh, that people just 
both during coffee breaks and then in following panels can, can address uh, the point that you just made. That is a very important one. So I thank you all uh, for participating and, uh, and thank you. Yeah.